GMS Walk and Talk. Uh, today we're going to talk about Alexander. Well, I'll call him Alexander the Great because he was great in wickedness. And uh, he was uh, very pivotal in uh, not only our history, history of the Israelites, but uh, history of the Edomites, which is the so-called white people today. You know, they used to have a commercial years ago where the Edomites, the so-called white people, said that their history started with the Greeks. And that's uh, somewhat true because in the Apocrypha, in the first book of Maccabees, the first chapter, around the seventh verse, it mentions that when the Greeks took over under Alexander the Great, it says that wickedness multiplied in the earth. So that's another scripture that proves the so-called white man's the devil that the Bible speaks of. And you know the word devil means deceiver. So we're going to talk a little bit about Alexander. The word Alexander, I believe, means protector. Now, he came out of uh, Philip of Macedonia. And uh, he was uh, considered half Macedonian, which, you know, they were all Edomites. But just like, I'll give you another example, just like when the Romans took over, you had one group of Romans calling themselves Edomites, and you had another group of Romans calling themselves what? Romans. So that's part of Esau's history, you know, to call himself by other names. Anyway, uh, Alexander, the relationship between uh, Alexander and his father, they were always uh, trying to outdo each other. Uh, pretty much Alexander, he didn't really respect his father, you know, which once again is a trait of what? The Edomites. <laughs> Um, I'll give you an example. When Alexander's father was getting married, I guess he was getting married to this young chick. And, um, you know, they were all sitting at the table, Alexander's father. There was a general that was underneath uh, Philip of Macedonia. And he was uh, also the uncle of the chick Philip of Macedonia was getting married to. And um, he made a statement, he said, he said, now we'll have a legitimate heir to the throne. So Alexander heard that and he got mad at the uncle of this chick and he, you know, his glass of wine, he took it and he threw it at the uncle of this chick Philip was getting married to, trying to take his head off. And when Alexander saw that, Alex, uh, I'm sorry, when uh, Philip saw that, he got mad and he rushed Alexander. But in his haste to rush to Alexander, he slipped and he tripped and he fell. And Alexander said, as the man that's talking about how he's going to pass from Europe to Asia, conquering, and he can't even pass from one chair to another. <laughs> so that shows you his disdain for his father. All right. Um, Alexander, he was raised by, uh, of all people, a so-called Negro woman. She was the sister of uh, his best friend, which was an Israelite named Cletus the Black or Cletus Mellus. So once again, the Negro woman <laughs> raising the seed of the devil. I forgot what her, I think her name was Lakides or Lakinanides or, or something like that. If we find it, we'll put it up for you. But that just gives you the history right there. Also, Alexander, he loved to cross dress. All right. His favorite uh, cross dressing um, idol was Artemis, which Artemis was uh, worship. Um, that was the so-called goddess with the multi-breasts, 
that was always that was uh, also worshipped by the Romans, especially in the city of Ephesus. You know, she was also she also went by the name Diana, Diana of Ephesus. So Alexander worshipped that idol and used to dress up like her. So basically, Alexander was a cross dresser. What did the Bible say about Alexander when he took over? Wickedness multiplied in the earth. So you know this Israelite, Cletus Melus, he had to be a cross-dresser too, for him to be best friends with Alexander. And that's an example of how the Israelites became degenerates. When you go in the book of Jeremiah, the second chapter, the Lord said that he had planted the Israelites as a noble vine. How have they become a degenerate plant unto him? That's an example. That's also an example of how the Israelites became Gentiles. In the case of this uh, Cletus Melus, what would he be, be considered? A Gentile, not an Israelite. Because why? Because he followed the ways of the Gentiles, in this case, Alexander. Um, Alexander was also tutored by uh, Aristotle, which Aristotle was an Israelite, for about three years. See, when he turned uh, the age of 13, um, his father, Philip of Macedonia, sent for Aristotle to tutor him. And he was tutored in the arts of uh, religion, which means different gods, um, poetry, different aspects of life which shows you that in back in the ancient world there was no high school there was no grade school you had tutors the rich families that could afford it they would send for for men from in many cases far distances that would tutor them and teach them so what does that show you in the kingdom we, we ain't gonna there's not gonna be no grade school no high school we're going to have tutors. And another word for tutor is teachers. And see, this society is all messed up. But you know, the elites, the top elites, they have tutors, man. All right? They don't go to high school. They don't go to grade school. And even these colleges are full of shit. All right? Um, the school that... Uh, uh, what's his name? Aristotle set up. He set up a school where he could tutor Alexander. And not only was Alexander tutored, his uh, his close friends were tutored too. Which one of them would become one of the four generals that would rule after Alexander died. That being Cassandra. All right. Uh, it was Alexander. It was Cassandra. And they were tutored at a place called uh, Mesia, which was also known as the Temple of the Nymphs, which was a place where these gods were worshipped. Which shows you once again, pursuant to Psalms 96 and 5, it says the gods of the nations are what? Idols. These so-called, these so-called, um, these so-called, uh, gods were worshipped by these other nations. They never had this truth. They never had the understanding of this knowledge. And Aristotle, he would be considered a Gentile, an Israelite foreigner. Because he was all into the philosophy of the Greeks. And he was the main guy that tutored Alexander the Great. When I say great, I mean great in wickedness. Because that's what he was great for. Anyway, there's two deciding battles that Alexander took part in that uh, brought an end to the medial uh, Persian Empire, in this case the Persian Empire. The two battles was the Battle of Issus and the Battle of Gargamela. The last battle was the Battle of Gargamela. Uh, 
at that battle, the Battle of Gargamela, Darius, which his name was Cordomanus, he took on uh, the title of Darius the Third, correct? Um, his name was Cordomanus. He fled that battle, and uh, Alexander never got to kill him. In that whole battle, all Alexander was thinking about was getting this guy, Cordomanus, and killing him. Well, he never got to do that because Darius fled the battle, leaving his wife and his wife's mother. Now, the, according to the history on Alexander, it says that he took uh, Cordomanus' wife, which her name was uh, Roxanne, and had children with her. And in the process of time, Roxanne's mother, which was the, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Cordomanus' mother, which her name was Sissy Gambus, she uh, started to really like Alexander, so much so that when he died, <coughs> she uh, died not too long after him uh, of uh, heart grief, you know? So I guess Alexander had that winning, charming personality, <laughs> like most devils do. Uh, so in 331, I think it was th uh, 331 BC, that's when the city of uh, uh, Persepolis fell. Persepolis was the uh, main city of the Persian Empire. After that city fell, that's when the Greeks totally had the, the Persians. Uh, Alexander basically he became a king at the age of 20. And he ruled for 12 years. And then he died at the age of 33. The history says, some people say he died of syphilis. That's what they was they said. But there's other historical accounts that said he drank this big bowl of wine in honor to the god Hercules. And at that uh, festival, he was poisoned after drinking that wine. That wine obviously was poison, and he died not too long after that. But he was drinking in honor of Hercules, another god worshipped by the Greeks. So there you have it. Now we're going to go into the scriptures, dealing with this guy Alexander. And by the way, Alexander, when he took over, that's when that was the beginning of the Hellenistic culture. The Hellenistic culture was the culture that uh, Israelites got into and they got into it heavy. It was a way of dressing, a way of uh, discoursing. It was like a whole philosophy, just like you have the American philosophy today. The American way of dressing, the American way of speaking. Well, you had that back in the uh, Greek Empire. It was known as the Hellenistus. And that's your Israelite foreigners today that you read about when Paul made the statement when he said there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Because you had a lot of Israelites that were worshiping the ways of the Hellenistas, or the Hellenists. And Alexander was responsible for that. Because after he died, that tradition continued under his four generals, of which the next lesson I'll go into, starting with uh, Ptolemy. Because basically this is going to be like a series. I'm going to touch on Alexander, which I just did. Now I'll give you a little information about Ptolemy. And Ptolemy the first, Ptolemy the second, which Ptolemy the second was worshipped as a god by the Israelites, known as Serapis. That was set up by Ptolemy the first. He set his son up to be a god. <clears throat> We're going to get into that in the next lesson. But now I want to read to you uh, some scriptures dealing with Alexander. The first is Daniel 8, 3 to 8. Now this is a vision that Daniel saw of Alexander. Because you got people that say, well, the Bible is not relevant. It's just a book of fairy tales. There's no significance to it. Is that right? If there's no significance to the Bible, why is Alexander written in there? The history of Alexander the Great. 